Happy New Year everyone, MacBoy here from MacBoy Productions. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to the Mac OS 10 Tips and Tricks 2010, where you'll just sit back, relax, and learn some of the most amazing, hidden, and distinct keyboard shortcuts, terminal command lines, and tweaks you can apply to your system on the Mac platform. The following tutorial is intended for the beginner or the intermediate Mac user. For many of these tips have been uncovered previously numerous times. So here they are in no particular order, Mac OS 10 Tips and Tricks 2010, brought to you by MacBoard Productions. The first and my far most favorite keyboard shortcut is Command Option Control 8. My screen capturing software is not able to detect this, but if you go ahead and hit those modifier keys plus the number 8, your colors on the screen should invert and the look is just amazing. And if you want to undo that, go ahead and hit those modifier keys and the number 8 once again. A lot of people are still confused with the Mighty Mouse that used to come with the Max, how it doesn't have a right click and Mighty Mouses only have one click. A lot of PC users keep saying that Mighty Mouses only have one click, which is the left click, but let me prove you wrong. It's built into the system preferences on your Mac. Go ahead and launch that up and go into your mouse preferences. Here you can select which button performs which task and clearly I've set my right click to my secondary button in the system preferences. So when I right click on my mouse, it's going to right click on my desktop. The Mighty Mouse detects pressures on each side of the device and can tell if it's a left click or right click. Apple built in the sound effect for when you turn up and down the volume, you get the sound. Now let me tell you, that can get very annoying very quickly. And there's a simple way to get rid of it. You can either hold shift each time you're turning up and down the volume, or you can just go into your system preferences then the sound preference pane, and uncheck play feedback when volume is changed. Once you have that, you'll be getting no feedback, no sound effect when turning up and down the volume. A feature that Apple put into their operating systems dock is to be able to drag URLs into there. Let me go ahead and launch my browser, and on my top left corner, or my address bar, you have youtube.com. You can just drag that favicon, that icon right there, into your dock, and it's going to turn into that Apple Spring icon right there. And every time, you don't even have to have... Safari open, you can just click on youtube.com and it'll take you right there. It's basically another way to access your favorites or your bookmarks. So say you love my website, which uh, you probably do, macmagic.org, you can just go ahead and drag that icon to the dock as well. Now here's a tip for all you bloggers out there. When you're, say, reviewing an application, something like Color or ADM or Apps App or whatever, and you want to extract the icon but don't know how and it's just a pain to go on the internet, go Google and look for the icon and download it from there, you can do it directly within your system. And all it takes is one application. Now there are two ways to do this. There's a simple way and a more advanced way. Let me show you the simple way first. Let's say you want the icon of ADM. All you have to do is hit Command C after selecting the application in your applications folder or wherever it is and, and go ahead and launch Preview which comes with your Mac. Once it's launched, there's no window going to be opened up. You can go to File, New from Clipboard or you can just hit command N, and the ADM icon is right there. Now there are of course different versions of it, different sizes of it. You can select that one, go to file, save as, select the format you want to save it in, say a JPEG, ADM, quality is best, of course JPEGs can have the alpha, save it, I'm going to my desktop, and ADM is right there. A little more advanced technique is to use image to icons. This is a third party application that I'm going to show you guys and you can download it from a link in the description. It's a very very simple but intuitive application that lets you convert the images or icons of different folders and applications into your own format. So let's go ahead and find the icon for motion and you can just go ahead and drag this motion application into the window here or to the actual application in the dock and it's going to come up right there. From here you can tell to save as a PNG, a TIFF, or a GIF image. And it has a little more features with icons also, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. Another good tip that Apple put in their system lies in the spotlight. If you go ahead and hit the keyboard shortcut command space, and uh, say type in A plus or 8 times 8 equals 64, you can use preview, or I'm sorry, you can use spotlight to do math calculations, and this includes anything. 8 times 7, 9, 9, all this, you can do whatever you want and it will calculate it instantly. You can also use it to search words in your dictionary. So say you don't know what Apple means. If you go down, and it will show you the definition right there. Go ahead and hit enter, it will launch the application dictionary with the Apple word selected. So you may use Spotlight for quick math calculations and definitions of words found in the Apple dictionary. Something that I didn't like what Apple did was they removed the autoplay in QuickTime 10, meaning that when you open up videos, it doesn't play automatically. But you can change this easily from a simple command line in Terminal. Go ahead and launch it, you can hit command space on the keyboard and type in Terminal, it should come up right there. Go ahead and copy and paste the command line you find in the description of this video. And now if you open up videos in QuickTime 10, 
They all play automatically. What's up? I got glasses. That was from a long time ago. <clears throat> Anyways, moving on. Um, this next tip is for people who are like me and like to change the wallpapers very, very often. In my opinion, these are the two best websites where you can find HD wallpapers for your Mac. Randomwalls.com and InterfaceLift.com. I've said this millions of times, guys, but for those of you who are watching and are new, InterfaceLift dot com and randomwalls.com are the two best websites to find HD wallpapers for your Mac. Again, the links for these websites are in the description. I find this one to be one of the most creative options that Apple has put into their Finder. Go ahead and launch your Finder, Finder and hit Command G on your keyboard. This will bring up the window options. And what I want to show you is how you can change the background color of each specific window. From here in the subsection of background, you can keep it to white. You can have a selected color. So red, green, blue, orange, whatever you want. Or you can even add your own picture. So let's find a picture from uh, see my desktop pictures and select that. And if I go up because it doesn't change the dimension of the original wallpaper, this is what you have. This is what you get. And it's a pretty nice tip. It's a pretty nice way to change and customize your finder. Well, this almost concludes the first part of Mac OS 10 Tips and Tricks 2010. Let me show you one last trick here. If I go ahead and show my desktop and uh, say I'm going to click on a folder and when I hit the space bar to quick look it, this is what I get. I get an x-ray or I can see right through what the items are in that folder so, and they're rotating also as you can see in this little animation. And you can get this simply again by going and launching terminal and pasting the command line in the description. And for those, for those of you who don't know how I hide and show my desktop icons like this, it's from the application called Camouflage and it runs in the background in your menu bar right here. You can download this once again from the link in the description. Well, that does conclude the first part of our Mac OS X Tips and Tricks 2010 video series. We hope you learned something from this tutorial and guys, there's much more tips and tricks in the part 2 of this video series which can be watched from the link right here or by clicking right here. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe on these videos on the channel. And guys, over there to the right, in the description, you'll find my Twitter, my blog, and my business email where you can contact me for any questions, concerns, comments, or suggestions. Once again, thanks a lot for watching. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see every single one of you next time right here on Macboy Productions. Peace.